If I can find a nipple, it's getting grease. Everybody better watch out. It is a brisk one here in Ontario this morning, and welcome back to another one. As you know, last week we went on, last week? Before, last week. Last week, we're going to go with last week. We went on vacation to Texas, Houston, Texas. We drove the Silverado from Ontario to Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, northwest tip of Georgia, to Alabama, went into Mississippi, then Louisiana. And after a nice Cajun meal in Baton Rouge, we then continued on to Houston, host, host Texas. By my words, we then continued on to Houston, Texas. Now after a couple of trips around Houston, going to different places and this and that, on day three, three, I was making a right turn. Like I've done many, many times before. Well, something yelled at me from the right front. I wasn't sure what it was, but it did concern me a little bit. Now, when we got back to where we were staying, I had Jen jump in the truck. It was running. I was laying in front of it. No, she, she thought about running me over, but she didn't, thankfully. I had to turn the wheel all the way to the right. You're looking at this. It might be, I might be pointing left, but it was all the way to the right. And the tie rod was not happy. And it let me know it. Did I get concerned? Yeah. I can change a lot of things. But a tie rod might be just a little bit much. So on this trip to Texas, I loaded up the back of my truck with everything. I mean, everything. I had tools. I had jacks. I had pretty much everything I thought I was going to need. And here we are unloading it when we got home. After 5,200 miles, the Great American Road Trip is over. We're back home. It is time to unload the truck. Some of you will understand, some of you might not, but this is what I consider necessity. Not to mention your socks and underwear, but tools and extra fuel and all kinds of stuff, necessity. So we are going to get the back of my truck cleaned out. We gotta get the front of my truck cleaned out because it looks like somebody lived in it for a week, which we did. We kind of get things back to as normal as we can now. I don't know, normal and us are, don't quite go together, but let's get to it. I'll explain that in a minute. Coleman stove, ratchet set, ceramic heater, and some rope, and a tarp. Backpack full of goodies in case I got to walk somewhere. 10 extra gallons worth of fuel. Make that 15 extra gallons worth of fuel, some oil, brake fluid, steering fluid, and that new grease gun. One empty cooler. I also have a three ton floor jack. Why? Because it'll make my life easier on the side of the road. That's going to be it for the back of the truck. That stays there all the time. Four-way wheel, four wheel wrench. Trouble finding my words there. That'll stay there all the time. Now we're going to get stuff out of the back seat. All right, guys. i got to explain the grease gun. What was it? Day three? Day four? Did I, either one of those days. Uh, we were about to go to Galveston, Texas the next morning. And it's about an hour drive, a little more now you won't go through traffic, and traffic there is a whole other story. I tell you, I love my small town, and that's the reason. I don't want to sit in traffic. I noticed a creaking sound in the front end when I turned the steering wheel. I wasn't too sure what that was. And it would appear the tie rod end was not happy on the right side. But I'm like, why is it going bad? I mean, the truck's only five, six years old. I looked at it, and there's a grease nipple on it. And I'm like... I thought everything was maybe maybe to my naiveness, if that's even a word. I'm thinking, everything is greaseless. There's no nipples on nothing. Because when I had the upper and lower control arms put in, there's no nipples. And I'm like, so you don't have to grease anything. I'm looking at that and I said, there's a nipple on there. And it was dry as a bone. 
So I said, the next morning, I got to get myself to a Hobo Freight. I got to buy a grease gun, which I did. So $20 grease gun, $10 grease. I greased it up right there in the parking lot at the Hobo Freight outside of, outside of Galveston, Texas. And uh, it stopped creaking. Now, I didn't know how much damage I had done. And we were driving home, starting driving home Thursday morning. I'm like, just get us home, get us home. And it still doesn't creak. Obviously, we're home without a problem. So I'm going to chalk that up to my preparedness, well, lack of, for the grease gun. But I had a, but there was a hobo freight nearby, so you could say I was prepared. But the fact of the matter is, if you're going to be traveling, learn how to do some things on your own. Because if you don't, you're going to end up having to pay money to get people to do things. I could have took that to a shop. Had them look at it and they said, yep, it's a tie rod on. Well, they were going to change it and put a new one on it. This way, it was a $30 fix. Got us home. Learn how to do your own thing. Now, a list of tools of what I had. Obviously, I had a jack. I didn't bring any jack stands, but I had a jack. And the reason I did all this is because I had room. And it would have made my life easier. Need I lay on the side of the road. We were prepared as best we could. Who knew I was going to need a grease gun? But I got a new grease gun sitting back there. I didn't even have to argue to get it. So having said all that, what we're going to do now is we are going to go grease every fitting on that truck. If I can find a nipple, it's getting grease. Everybody better watch out. So we have our $20 grease gun and our $8 grease. We're going to grease up the rest of this. All right, now before y'all lose your mind, I don't have jack stands under here. I do have them, but I'm not gonna be using them. Reason is, I'm only gonna lift this up a couple of inches, and I can safely fit under there if this thing decides it wants to come down. It's time to get serious. Here we go. Someday I'm gonna have a shot. And I won't have to be laying in the driveway doing this. Until then, we're laying in the driveway. Actually, I don't think I need to jack it up at all. Let's see what we're looking at here. All right. I'm sure well you can see that, but here's what we're looking at here. You can see the nipple on top. I just turned the wheel all the way to the right and it didn't scream. So I did get some in there, but we're going to do both sides here. Beatrice, you come to help? Hey, you. Are you coming to help me? You're going to get grease all over you there, sunshine. Now I remember laying in the rain. Not the happiest guy in the world. And this fitting, not wanting to snap on wasn't sure why but it didn't want to snap on you got to make sure that you stick the tip with all the grease in the leaves let see it's not clipping on there can I make it work probably Well, quite a bit on the outside. Hopefully some got inside. We're falling apart down here. I need a shot. I need a shot bad. Okay, we got some in there anyways. All right, well, that's going to do it. There we go. So this is not really an EDC video, but I'm going to show you what I do carry every day. A buddy of mine, James, asked me to do a video on what I carry in my truck all the time. Now, there's a backpack, which you saw in the other portion of the video. That's a three-day supply of everything I think I need. But for repairs on the road, this is what I carry. First thing we have is a four-way wheel wrench lifesaver when it comes to taking lug nuts off on the side of the road i think i paid eleven dollars no nine dollars for this at harbor freight 
shovel. Well, he's got to bury a body somewhere. Then we have our crate. All right, so in our road box, we've got a tire inflation device. I believe that was about $35, a Canadian tire. We've got a plug kit. Uh, I don't think that was very expensive. That might have been $10 or $11. Uh, we have extra cement. This box, this bag, is full of tools. This box will hold condensation. And it'll start to rust your stuff. And it's not going to work when you want it to work. So we got to make a change there. Uh, power steering fluid. Now this bag also has a bunch of sockets in it. You get some tie straps, booster cables, and a tow rope. Now, can I make the tools work? I can, but that's not nice to treat your tools like that. So, I just realized not that long ago that it was holding condensation in the box. So, I got to come up with a better system than that. I got a nice heavy duty bag in the house that I might put all this stuff in a bag as opposed to this. Because this is not working. So, am I being paranoid? I don't think so. Am I being prepared? Well, hopefully, if something goes wrong and I have some way to fix it, as opposed to relying on somebody else to me that's a better option one you're gonna learn something two I, I got my fingers going over here see that it might save you some money or it might get you out of a bad situation by being outside of an expressway or a highway somewhere with traffic going by get it fixed quick get off the highway and get it done professionally like I not that I'm not a professional I'm a professional ask me I'll tell you the foreman's come to see what's going on here. Well, the shovel does not fit in that box, so it won't be going in there. But you got to get better organized so that everything is where you need it. That bag is a better option. I think we're going to switch to the bag. So this is Beatrice. She is a feral kitten that just happened to show up. As you know, we got Louie. Louie's around here somewhere. I'm not sure where she's at. I call her Louie, but it's Louise. Where are you going? Where are you going? I gotta close up. So Louise has been here for probably a little over a year. Beatrice, she just happened to show up a couple of months ago as a kitten. Well, she took up residence. We built our house and now her condo is right beside Louise's. Call me soft. And I'm not gonna go too in depth with the bag. It's got uh, we got some rope. We got a toque. It's starting to get colder here, so we got some little cold weather gear. This is a neat little light that we got at Harbor Freight a while ago. Lift it up. That gives off a lot of light when it's pitch black. That is a lot of light, and they were like uh, four dollars. Uh, also got a roll of shit tickets because you just never know. Also carry a life straw, got some fire starting stuff. Uh, we got a headlamp. I'll, I'll go into a whole bag setup in another video. I'll just try to give you a little idea of what's in there. And uh, Beatrice, what are you doing over there? My goodness. Beatrice, come on, let's go. Hey, come on. You're not coming, let's go. Come on. Let's go. You can jump. Come on. Those are leather seats, by the way. Just throwing it out there. What are you doing, huh? What are you doing? Come on. Let's go. No, you got to come out. Nope. Nope. Come on. Let's go. There you go. Keep my door shut. Well, I'll get somewhere in town and find out I got a cat in the back. Oh, I want to show you something else. Look out. So I've only been across town and back since we've been back. I haven't been really anywhere. And uh, I'm going to show you. Look at that flashing. Hopefully you can see it. We'll go to the trip meter. I said it when we left. 5,337. Even if you want to knock 37 off, 5,300 kilometers. We went from here. Like I said, all the way down to Texas, all around Texas, and then all the way back home. 
Uh, that was a fantastic trip. I just started a new playlist on the channel called The Great American Road Trip. And all the videos from that road trip are going to go in there. There's a lot of highway driving, some back roads driving, uh, some city driving, some of the sites we went to see, some dolphin it's, Check it out. It's pretty good. Anyway, that's all I got for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed that. A little bit of vehicle maintenance, a little bit of EDC in the truck, and uh, my personal bag, which we'll get into that on another day. I want to thank you all for taking time out of your day to stop by and watch my videos. We appreciate it very much. We've got some new things coming up, hopefully the first of the year. Um, we're pretty excited about it. We're going to take our channel to a whole new level and uh, might even be some merch coming. So having said that, you all have yourselves an awesome day and we'll see you on the next one. Later.